Hey, Sandra. Hey, guys. How are you guys doing? I'm good, and you? I'm okay. How's That's it? good. It's okay. It's okay so far. I just, you know. What's that? Yeah. Can you hear me? I'm holding upside down or whatnot. I'm okay. Chemistry is, is not being so nice. Chemistry? Yeah. But um calculus too. I had like we had one exam. We took one exam already. And then now we, I took three exams. So technically the first exam I got a eighty. And then the the, the third, the second and the third, I got a hundred. Can you imagine? And then the fourth one I got an eighty because I got one question. So, so far, the calculus, too, is looking pretty good, you know. And anatomy and physiology, too, I did an exam, and I got an 89 also. Yeah, everything is looking good except for chemistry, though. I don't know. My chemistry is not being nice to you, is it? At this point, I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm, I think I'm just going to have to get that pass in chemistry. <laughs> the policy, the new policy, the passer, um, Passing um, um I get credit and then if you fail no credit doesn't affect the GPA because I don't know what's ha I, I don't know what's gonna happen to this chemistry. But yeah, well, from that we'll thing time, see what happens. Who knows what's gonna be there. Yeah, we'll wait to see what happens because I think I still have two more exams left so for chemistry. Right now. Because I had two exams for chemistry, the first and the second one, I filled both of them. So, I don't know. For me? No. For me. That's for us. Us? Yeah. So what does the us come in? <laughs> Wait, turn off the light. I'm in the dark. I'm sure to be in the dark. <laughs> well, how is Marley doing? What's that? And me? Oh, oh I thought you were asking. Age and mouth. Age and mouth. Good afternoon, everyone. How you doing? Hey. Waiting on some late arriving crowd, I guess. Okay, no worries, no worries, you know. I'm I'm here for you guys, so more to marry. <laughs> Give it a couple of minutes and then we'll start. We'll okay. We'll have we'll probably have some people pop in, but I'm also gonna record it so we can share with the students. Absolutely. All right. How's everything going with you? Things are very good. I'm grateful, you know. Um here making progress. Uh you know, just pushing through, you know, each day. I'm thankful that uh, I'm alive and surviving. <laughs> you know. How about you? How's the family? We're good. We're just, you know, running two host host offices out of my uh, my apartment. Got gotcha, you. Gotcha. Awesome. Uh, the kids are okay. They're just a little stressed by being around, you know, us two senior citizens all the time. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Play with their friends, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But we're good. We're good. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And I interviewed I interviewed Brandon the other day. You know Brandon, right? One moment. Give me 
me one second, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, Boss, where's Marley? Marley? Is it around? Oh. Why? Oh, I was asking for Asher. How's Ma Marley and Miles? Ma oh. Mm -hmm. Kind of like eating snacks now, I guess. Mm -hmm. Snack time. Okay. Are you enjoying me working home with <laughs> your co co work? I mean, how I see that? Is it co working? I don't remember. I can't remember the word. But you and Marley. And Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm back. It's challenging. That must be something. Yeah. Marley's very demanding. She brought me a stack. Yeah, you think I saw her mom put some pictures. She was Rapunzel. You. <laughs> That's funny. It is. Those kids are like. I was I was looking at my phone the other day, and I, I was like, oh, I saw a snap with my, with me and Noha and Miles and Marley. I was like, oh my gosh, that I think that was like the last time. Noha and I were we were babysitting, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, we have to take pictures of this baby, and now he's all grown. <laughs> yeah, I know he's walking. No, wow. And he's climbing. Wow. I think you guys will have to get the, what's this called? The barricade or something? Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. That's not going to stop him from climbing or walking. <laughs> oh, I can see you. That's so cool. Let's see. I have a waiting room of five people. I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> Oh my, it's like, yeah. right. How's everybody? Yeah. Is, Is Denise in the shadow? Hi, I know. <laughs> I saw Gianju was trying to get in. No, I. Is I let Gio this laptop and he signed into his Zoom account and then we switched laptops and I forgot to sign him out. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's so why Gio's name is on here. What I'll do is um, I'll kick you off um, with this group and then I'm sure we'll have some people who are going to join us. <laughs> Let me see it. I can't remember what I'm doing here anymore. Mm -hmm. No, he's standing. Do all this and this. There's Denise. I'm gonna make this. Sandra and Alan to the right side. So hi everybody. Thank you for being here on time. I appreciate it. Um, this is the uh, Student Ambassador Workshops, Friday Ambassador Workshops, um, for May first. Imagine May first. Um, Jamel was booked long before anything happened with named Corona. Um, and he was going to come and visit our campus and I had asked him last year to come, but he was too busy because he's like this big shot, successful, uh, entrepreneur, speaker, professor, uh, PhD candidate or PhD already, Jamel? Pending. We're waiting to hear back. All right. Uh, waiting to hear back. So um, I was always going to put you in the hands of this great uh, orator uh, who I've uh, known for a, a long time in CUNY. Uh, I've had the privilege to be there when he's spoken um, and before public officials on the, on the stairs of City Hall um, in Albany. Um, he, he is, uh, he's one of you guys and you know, he came from the grassroots of CUNY and he's making his way um, on to the White House, he says. Uh, so, and I believe him because he, he's a motivated gentleman. So, 
I'm going to leave you. Uh, I'll be here, but I'm going to leave you to my good friend Jamel Henderson uh, to do his uh, wonderful workshop, um, the Henderson Rules. And he's going to tell you a little bit more about it. All right. Thank you, uh, Jason. Uh, first off, good afternoon to everyone. First of all, happy Friday and happy May Day. All right. It is May Day. Uh, it's a, we made it to the fifth month of this year and decade. Um, I don't know about you all, but this is one for the books. This is something that is like you tell, it's, it's symbolism of like a Greek tale that you tell generations to come, like 2020 kicked off indoors, <laughs> you know? And the possibility it could be like this for the rest of the year, uh, but the question becomes, what do we do in this spare time? What do we do with this additional time? Um, so I hope that number one, all of you are safe. Hope you all are well. Hope you all are, are doing things to, to make yourselves better. I say to many of us that this is a period of transformation and that when the world opens up, there's going to be two types of people. There's going to be those who are going to be the new platinum carrying cards of the coulda, woulda, shoulda club. And then there's going to be the people that are choosing to transform. And so I hope that you all are choosing to transform. So um, before I get into uh, the workshop, um, I want to let you know up front, and, and um, Jason knows this about me, that when it comes to my workshops, I'm very non-traditional. Yes, I will provide you with a lot of information. I'm going to drop a lot of knowledge on you guys. Um, but I want things, I'm pretty unorthodox. So I do things differently because especially now in this space where you got to implement some fun, you got to implement some joy. So this is the student ambassadors workshop. So as student ambassadors, you are our leaders. And as leaders, you gotta be seen. And sometimes, uh, you know, we get so caught up in the work that we forget that we are human beings and that we get to live life and we get to have fun. So um, I'm gonna push you all a little bit to do that today, okay? So I need, uh, before we even get into the, the workshop, I need a verbal confirmation from everyone here that you are in agreement, that you are open, willing, and able to push yourself today to achieve a taste and a glimpse of being a successful and breathtaking leader. If you all agree, I need to hear a verbal yes. 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 Well, Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very excited. Super yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, leaders, y'all say y'all ready to be open and be willing and be able. So, let's get right into it. I'm going to do something and I want to see what you do. All right, all right, all right. Now, I love starting my workshops like this. Jason knows I love doing this. Because I asked you all if you were ready to push yourself to have an experienceable glimpse of what it's like to be a phenomenal and breathtaking leader. All y'all said yes. And I just pushed the button. And I'm looking at, here's my reaction. I see no screen faces except two or three. Uh, I see two people looking like this. <laughs> but only one decided it was like, okay. And I want to give a shout out to you, Maritza, because 
you got it. So shout out to you, Maritza, because this is the first step, and I didn't even get into the workshop yet, but this is the first step I tell leaders. Exhale, let loose, <laughs> let loose. <laughs> it's okay to have a good time, <laughs> especially in this space right now where you have to have joy. You've got to give yourself a reason why it's so important for you to live and survive. Why it's so important for you to push through and be the great leaders that you are. It's so important to do that. And what Maritza, what you symbolized was that, you know what? I'm going to go for it. What do I have to lose? Because there's so much to gain. And what that symbolizes as well is that she chose to be different. Okay? There are many leaders that tend to think that because they're in a title, and that they're in a particular position that they have to be, you know, astute and, you know, dignified and, you know, hi, how you doing? You know, all the time. And you do not. And I'm going to be sharing a lot of experiences from my personal life to tell you that you can do it if you choose to. Does that make sense, everyone? Awesome. So um, let's get right into it. I'm going to share my screen. So I'm going to be talking. Um, there's going to be times I'm going to take it off because I want to, you know, interact with your faces. But, you know, hopefully you got some pens and papers ready because I'm going to be dropping a lot of knowledge on you guys. You're going to be like, wow, this man's deep. <laughs> All right? Cool. So where are we? Awesome. So we're going to start right here from the beginning. Okay, I can still see your faces. So this is the Henderson Rules for Successful and Breathtaking Leadership. All right? I believe in my heart where I'm at in this place in my life right now that leadership can be successful and it can be breathtaking. It can be something that is so phenomenally beautiful that you wake up doing it. You wake up experiencing it with so much joy and so much happiness, right? And even when there are moments where you are experiencing sadness or depression, you can still exude that power by leaning on others for support, okay? So this is the workshop that I have for you. Um, you know, I make a joke that, you know, some of you all know about the CUNY Henderson rules of, you know, protection and all those things. That has nothing to do with me. This is my own rules of telling you all the importance of being a successful and breathtaking leader. So, let me tell you, so this, I want to put my information out there first, because by the time I finish, uh, there's probably going to be more questions, and you're probably going to want to be in support, so I'm putting all my information out there. There's my website information, all my Facebook information, my Instagram, both personal and public, and, and my Twitter, and YouTube, and my email. Um, I'm sharing all this with you because this is the type of person that I am, right, and that I want people to not only see that I talk to talk, but I walk to walk and that I have no problem, you know, opening up myself to you, especially because of the path that I'm taking towards presidency, which will happen. Um, so this is my information. Uh, so make sure you, you take a picture, write it down, whatever you need, and then we will uh, push forward. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Going once. Going twice, moving forward. All right, awesome. So, a little bit about me, right? Like some of y'all probably like, who is this guy? Well, let me break it down for you. I am a four-time graduate of the City University of New York, uh, receiving degrees from the Borough Manhattan Community College, Brooklyn College, Baruch, and most recently the Grad Center. I've just recently applied to the inaugural Doctor of Education program at the College of Staten Island. Uh, so uh, praying that I'll get in and upon getting in, I will begin this summer and uh, it'll be on the road to making history as not only becoming a five-time graduate of CUNY, but probably becoming the first, if not the only person to achieve all four levels from this university of degrees. So I'm all about making history and opening doors for all of you all to do it in your own special way. Uh, I ran for city council in 2017 um, in the 41st district of Brooklyn. So uh, I definitely know what it means to step up. 
Uh, I have my own business, uh, which is currently uh, in the works of being built. Um, but I have my business certified by the state of New York. So I have my business called the Jamel Henderson Consulting Group, which is a organization designed to teach, train leaders, to motivate them, but to also step into organizational structures and transform it within 100 days or less. I am also the co-chair for Citizen Action New York for the New York City chapter, which is a progressive grassroots organization focused on economic, social, political ju justice for our city. I am also the chairperson of Neighborhood Advisory Board number eight here in Brooklyn, which focuses on passing out resources to the community from DYCD, which is the Department of Children and Youth Development. I am currently the CUNY Rising Alliance Coordinator, which you see all the work that we're doing through CUNY Rising, which is a or coalition of organizations focus on, you know, calling on the city and state to make CUNY free once again. I am also an adjunct professor at, in the political science department at Brooklyn College. Uh, this is uh, currently, this is my second semester teaching. Love it very much. I also have my own talk show through Young Boss Media called The Vanguard, which talks about politics from our point of view as millennials and from our perspective in black and brown communities. I am currently also a track and field coach at the Hewitt School on the Upper East Side, and I also do tons of motivational speaking engagements. I'm a mentor to many, and I'm a champion for civic engagement. So those are some of the things about me, and I'm 34 years old, and I am a resident of NYCHA. So I want you to know and understand that no matter what situation or circumstances you are in, you can achieve this and more but you can do it in your own special way. You just gotta believe, all right? I have one many mantras and quotes, but this is my favorite one because I believe in it so much that change begins with one, therefore shall begin with me. I don't have time to wait for people to make changes. If you see something wrong, you gotta do it. And every time I see an issue, I do my best to do something to change it because I want people to know and understand that you can open up doors for anyone who's in need and that you can make a difference, but you gotta do it in the way you wanna do it. All right. So let's get into it. So what is leadership? If you want to look at the definition by default, this is the answer. The office or position of a leader, the capacity to lead or the act or an instance of leading. Right. And so these are the things that this is the definition of what leadership is. If you want to look at it from a plain context, that's what it is. So coordinator. That's a leadership position. I organize and lead, right? The capacity to. These are things that we do. You are all leadership. You are all practicing being in leadership roles. So this is the definition of what you do. Now, I believe that everyone can sing, all of us. I know some of y'all looking like, what? Yeah, all of us can sing. I can sing. You can sing, everybody can sing. You don't believe me? All right. Everybody take their phone off mute, or your computer off mute. On a count of three, just sing something, whatever comes to mind. Ready? One, two, three. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I Wonder where you are. Up above the world so high, like, like a, a diamond in the sky. sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I, I wonder where you are. Wow, you <laughs> all sound wonderful. You sound so amazing. Amazing. See, you proved. Yes. To everyone, you prove to the world that you can sing. <laughs> now, now you're ready for the bombshell now. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you want to be a singer, you have to develop the skills that is needed to become a singer. You get where I'm coming from now. Yeah. Everybody can sing. You just proved it. Um, I Daddy. didn't judge. I didn't say. If you find your banana, we're all Minion, Soldier, Kevin, Cheese, Door, and. Wait, somebody's phone is off mute. <laughs> um, I didn't tell you to harmonize. I didn't tell you to break into riffs. I just said sing. 
and all of you did that right some of you were high pitched some of you were low some of you you know was just like bumping i'm gonna sound a hot mess but you did it right and that's beautiful but if you want to become a singer you have to choose to develop yourselves to into that singer right and that takes training that takes practice that takes a uh, commitment that takes dedication that takes consistency right so in the same context it's the things about being a leader everyone can lead every single person has the ability to be a leader the difference is if you want to be a phenomenal leader all right you have to develop the skills to become a phenomenal leader everybody can lead but if you want to be a leader you have to develop those skills does that make sense cool so what does that mean to be a phenomenal leader well again i like to put words into context according to the web the dictionary phenomenal means known throughout the senses rather than through thought or intuition it's a, it's extraordinary or remarkable so what does that mean it's an aura it's an aura that comes around you when you activate those skills right and that it's all through your five senses you hear it you smell it you feel it you taste it you could see it you could touch it and some way say perform that's how it's set up and designed phenomenon right is an exceptional unusual or abnormal person thing or person so leaders you are i consider myself abnormal i am, am a mutant i am if i was an x-men i would be one of the leaders of x-men because i am that damn different why because i choose to be abnormal i choose to be different the things that i do you saw the things that i listed you some of y'all probably like how in the world does he do it because i'm a monster i'm a beast <laughs> right this is what i do because i choose to do it and if I can do it, why can't you? But do it better in your own special way. So again, being a leader is a person who has commanding authority or influence. So when you look at this, what is phenomenal leadership? It's breathtaking leadership. It's going above and beyond the challenge and the fray while, waking, while, while making a significant impact, okay? It's always going above and beyond okay if if somebody's saying that we can only do this this and this all right well i'm going to do those three things plus two and i'm going to make sure i make an impact it's about making your critic your critics your haters cringe at the level of success that is consistently creating a spark of change now why do i say it's about making them cringe because you want to identify other leaders and people in your life that are just going to hate on you they're going to boo you. They're going to like just say horrible things to you, right? And as leaders, you're going to have these two bleachers of people in the game. You got the people who are constantly saying, ah, boo, you whack, you suck. And you got people that's cheering you on. But what tends to happen is we are so prone to put our attention towards the people that's booing us because we want to look at them and say why don't you like me what am i doing wrong why don't you cheer for me they like boo get out of here right meanwhile you probably got a hundred people that's cheering you right now but you're not listening to them right they're the ones that are that are choosing to support you in every decision that you make and every success that you make and every decision that you make to make a difference in whatever leadership capacity you're doing so it's about making them cringe because your actions will consistently be in alignment with what you say. So whenever you walk into an environment, you you will know who they are. They will, you know, they're the ones that be like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. You could feel them like, yeah, they eyeing me in the back of my head. Meanwhile, I'm getting ready to get on the dance floor, have a good time. Right? You meet these type of people. When your presence changes the atmosphere and have people either want to know who you are or learn from you okay i tell people that as a leader as a phenomenal leader and as a breathtaking leader you are a thermostat you change the environment so if the environment is down the moment you walk in you can change it to make it great 
if the environment is chaotic, in the immediate moment, you can change it to make it peaceful and focused and redrawn back to what the mission is. I do this all the time because I want people to either ask, who is that guy? Or I want to connect with that guy. Simple as that. Make sense so far? All right. It is the ability to provide extraordinary fun and joy to the people you are serving. I get so frustrated when people are, are in service and they just look so stiff. They look so robotic. You ever watch Saturday Night Live? Like SNL, that's, what, that's the purpose of SNL. It's dry humor. You know they're looking at cue cards, right? They could be talking and they're looking like this. And they say, oh, yeah, I need to go to this store. I need, right? That's what they do. They, that's their job. As a leader, you don't have to be stiff neck. You don't have to be so, so rusty. Like, you need WD-40. Loosen up. Have fun when you're talking to people. Have fun when you are out there on the front lines. Have fun when you're standing in front of people who are in opposition of what you do. Have fun when people are hating on you. Give them more reasons to hate on you. I do it all the time because my mindset is you are choosing to bring all that necessary energy toward my direction and all i'm doing is taking it absorbing it and throwing it back to you in positivity and so while you're wasting all that energy or focusing on me i'm choosing to focus on myself which in turn focuses on everyone else some people get so caught up in that they're in their own jealousies in their own ways they stand as the enemy before they own opportunities to become even greater leaders because they feel like they have to follow somebody else and they don't make sense all right so now we're going to get into the henderson rules all right like i said it's not the cuny henderson rules you ain't got to sign no paper all right but this is about really rules that's going to help you to be the spark of change for the world to see now, when I say these rules, I'm going to be dropping a lot of knowledge and stuff. And all I'm going to do is be honest, truthful, and transparent. So, you ready for the rules? Yeah? All right. All right. Here we go. Rule number one, get out of your comfort zone. Don't be the coulda, woulda, shoulda person 50 years from now. I could go into tons of examples, but I'm going to go into this current example right now. Do you realize that no matter how much money we have, how much resources we have, right now in this very present moment, we are not in control of our everyday uh, life outside of our walls. Do you agree with that? The moment you go outside, you're restricted, right? You can walk outside if you want to. You can go outside. Actually, let me take a step back. You can go outside and do whatever the heck you want to do because that's your choice. But you also know either the benefits from it or the consequences from it. Um, hold on, sorry. <laughs> that's my work call. Um, so you know the benefits and consequences of that. So let's say I just say, you know what, screw this, I'm gonna go outside. All right, I'm gonna go outside with no mask. I feel good, like I feel excited again on the train, I'm on the bus. I'm in Times Square, I'm live IG in it, like it's mad empty out here, right? I'm doing all that in the moment, and that may be good. But then all of a sudden, you know, cough, cough here, sweaty, sweaty here, I catch it, pop, likelihood I perish, right? There are people who are choosing to say, you know what, I'm going to just do something, right? And then there are people who are choosing to utilize this time to transform their lives. As leaders right now, this is the best time to get out of your comfort zone. And what do I mean by that? Think about your goals and dreams. Whose goals and dreams are they? Are they really yours? Or are they your parents? Is it based on culture? Are you doing this because of community sake? Are you doing this because of namesake? What is your real passion? What are things that you wanted to do for so long that you now have the time to go for it? 
what are the things you're going to do as a leader that is going to make you different from everyone else? And that is getting out of your comfort zone. You don't want to be that person that is part of the club, coulda, woulda, shoulda. I find that super annoying. Man, 20 years ago, I would have did it this way. Man, if I was in your shoes, I should have did it this way. And it's like, no, I'm not going to be that person. If you see an opportunity to do something, get out of your comfort zone and do it now. It's called thinking outside the box, right? Even in our spaces, we can still get out of our comfort zone. Think about this. Some of you, some of us, since this, since we've been told to be inside, let's say I'm going to just do hypothetical percentages. 20% have chosen to do absolutely nothing since this thing started, meaning they just got up, ate, took a crap, watched Netflix, chilled, played, played some video games, probably went to the store, did whatever, that's it. Then there's another 20% who uh, is just choosing to be in a state of depression and boredom bored every day i'm bored every day i don't know what to do this is whack right they're choosing to step out of certain things these are all experiences but then there are people who are choosing to say you know what i'm gonna transform my place you know what i'm gonna start looking into my life i'm gonna start seeing how i can become a better leader how i can become a better person to be of service to the people i'm serving and that's what you all have to do don't be that coulda woulda shoulda person Okay, so that's the first rule. Sounds good? All right, that's rule number two. When it comes to leadership, it's not about you. I mean, I serve you. Now, what do you mean by that? What do I mean by that? When it comes to leadership, it's not about you. It's about being of service to others. When you are in service to others, the people that are receiving the service will then continue to choose to be in support of you. It is the people that make it about you because the services that you provide and the impact that you make, the people are going to speak it back into you and to others because that is their receipt of the action and the work that you've done. Whatever it is that you're doing, if you are a good leader, you're a phenomenal leader, and you're being of service, you ain't got to ever defend yourself because the people that you're servicing will do it for you because you are in service to them. If you make it about you, then you're screwed because then you're going to have that reputation that before you even walk in the door, people are going to know who you are. And you want to know how I know it's not about me? Because many of these things that I do, I do it out of love. Yes, do I know my work? Absolutely. But I also know that there are organizations and there are communities in, that look like me and you that need this and may not have the financial resources to do it. So if I can give this to them for free, absolutely. Just like, you, you know, I can do this because this is what I love. Right? And when you all are taking this and using it in your own special way and you are becoming the recipients of your leadership and service, then you will see the proof that when you do good for the people, the people will do good for you. As I was told, leadership is a selfless duty. Selfless. The moment you become selfish, you are no longer a leader. Okay, so that's Henderson rule number two. Um, rule number three, always dare to be different. There are over 7 billion people in this world. There's only one of you. I put this picture up for a reason because this was not only history because I shattered every statistic in this country that deemed a black man to not even make it to college, let alone graduate. But it's about the journey. It took me six years to receive my first degree. Six years. But because I chose to stay the course 
and not follow what other people were doing. As a result of that, three more came to pass in a shorter amount of time. How amazing is that? It took me six years to get my first degree. My second degree took me two and a half years. My third degree, 14 months, which was my first master's, and my second master's in nine months. That is a prime example of daring to be different. Every time I try to fit in with people or every time I felt like I needed to do things just to be seen and heard, I've always had my heart broken or I've always experienced feeling depressed, sad, and doubting myself. Daring to be different, let me explain something to you, is a lifelong journey. But where you start is by embracing everything about you, the good, the bad, the different. Don't worry about how what other friends or people or colleagues are doing. Don't worry about if they, you got, if they have the GPA better than you or not. You stay the course. Because if you stay the course and you stay focused and you choose to do it the way you want to do it because it's about you making it there, then you're going to be the leader that you need to be. I tell people all the time, I'm not, I'm not the traditional leader. I ain't got time for all that. I'm the same person that can pack out a massive crowd of 50,000 people and speak to them about this and be in the same night turning up at a party. No questions asked. Why? Because I choose to be different. This is what I choose to do. And because I choose to do it, it works for me based off the impact that I make. The things that I say, it's about me being different and I tell others to be different because there are so many people that are trying to fit in and they're always trying to push people to ride this wave. You got to go against the wave. You got to ride against the grain. If everybody's wearing white t-shirts, you wear a red one. Be different. Stand out. You're already unique because you're one out of 7.6 billion people. All right. Next rule. Never underestimate the power of the people you're serving. Don't violate me and I won't violate you. There are leaders who truly underestimate the power of the people they're serving. They know this way up here. Eh, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. They're going to vote for me again anyway. They don't know no better. All I got to do is smile and kiss baby. Do a little quick two-step. Right? You got elected officials that think just like that. You got leaders in your own school, in your community that think just like that. Don't underestimate the people you're serving because every position in some way, shape, or form has to have an election. And people remember. People are going to remember the work you do. People are going to see how you move and operate. And like I said, if you're in service to the people, the people will be in service to you. But if you screw them, oh, the people will screw you over. They will remember. And they will be the ones that's constantly harassing you and knocking on your door and calling you out. Because you think that you're better than them. I've seen SGA presidents. I've seen leaders who take their positions as if it's gold. And <laughs> they have to have a reality check that nobody cares. And that's the truth. Unless you are a global figure, right, or somebody big that you're following, nobody cares. So it's all about having a little bit of this, which we're going to talk to in a moment. But never underestimate the power of the people you're serving. The people are in your people you're serving are extremely smart talented, they're gifted. Give them opportunities to showcase their work. Let them be in support of you. Let them see from you directly. Let them, uh, let them have your ear and you give them your words. Because the same way you was hungry for opportunities, they're looking for it too. And you can tell who among the people you're serving is looking for that opportunity. Because one of the things I say is leadership never dies. Leadership is a lifelong journey. Positions come and go, but you're always choosing to strive to be a better leader if you want to become a better leader. 
Sounds cool. Number five, don't ever, which is good. Don't ever, 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 right? You can never, ever, ever, ever. Y'all remember that? Y'all a little, yeah, a little too many. <laughs> right? Don't let your title get to your head. Power does not lie in the position. It lies in the person who wields it, right? So let me give you a good example. If I was to give all of you a sword, the greatest sword in the world, right? I'm giving you, uh, from all my Game of Thrones fans, I'm giving you the sword of Ned, of Ed Stark. You know what I'm saying? My guy. Now they chopped his head off. But Ned Stark, right? And I'm handing this, this is the real thing, and I'm giving this to you. Take it and use it. Most of y'all probably wouldn't know what to do with it. Right? Some of us might use it for fun things or crazy things like slice butter with it or scare the mess out of somebody with it, right? Or, uh, you know, I don't know, you put, put some s'mores on it, whatever, right? But then there are going to be some who choose to achieve the skills needed to become a great swordsman. That's what this rule is all about. Everybody's given a sword, but not everybody's known how to use it. The power doesn't lie in the sword. It lies in the person who holds it. You make the sword better. You make the title better by applying the work that you do to achieve those results. So if I'm going to become the executive vice president of let's say global affairs, that title sounds good, sounds phenomenal, right? And I got to make big money. That's not like a big money title, right? Executive Vice President of Global uh, Affairs. Ooh, sound like maybe $400,000 a year, right? With some dividends, some stocks and all of that, right? That sounds good. Now, go outside on 42nd Street and yell that out and see what happens. <laughs> People ain't going to care. Why? Because when you're in your spaces, that's when your title activates. So right now, I'm in my space. My title, all of my titles are activated right now, right? Because I'm representing many organizations at work in this space right now. But the moment five o'clock hit, I'm logged out. <laughs> I got my Netflix ready, and I'm just simply Jamel Henderson chilling, about to watch uh the last episode of money heist season four if you haven't watched it yet i need you to watch it it is epic uh so, sorry to sidetrack um but <laughs> just wanted to put that out there but that's what it is the moment you walk off campus your title doesn't mean anything the moment you step off certain spaces your title doesn't mean nothing so don't let it get to your head do your best in those spaces but also know that people are trying to get results they ain't got time for all that you always see those snotty leaders they sit at the table they always want to be at the first table it's corny i've been at the first table you know what they do they make the corniest and driest jokes and i politely get up and i go to the back tables where all my real people are and i sit with them and people be asking me jamal why are you in the back here these are my people i know i'm being honored so I can't talk with them. I can't sit with them. And I talk to them what they telling me up front. Like, I had one meeting one time and a bunch of dignitaries and they literally was talking about, oh, how dry this chicken is. And I'm sitting there <laughs> laughing along, just playing along because it's just like, you know, you got to play the part. That's another workshop called The Art of Code Switching. Um, but you got to play the part. So you're like, hey, and in your head, you're like, all right, when the DJ coming out, because I'm ready to turn up. I'm ready to get out of here. You know, so don't let the title get to your head. All right. Now let's uh let's go to the next rule. Go hard. Rule number six: Go hard, go in, go home victorious. My ambition can never be stopped. Despite everything that I went through, that picture is worth it all. Because I tell people that 
I've been hit with a lot of lefts and rights in my life. Next Friday, it will be seven years since my mother passed. Both my parents are not here. My grandparents are not here, right? I've experienced heavy, heavy blows. I've experienced what it was like being evicted. I experienced what it's like being so depressed where your self-esteem is so crushed. I've experienced so many things, but yet I did not allow those circumstances to stop my ambition. I tell people on some real talk, based off of what uh, just a 1.1% of what I share with you, I have every right to not be in this position right now. I have every right to choose if I wanted to, to be out there strong on drugs, drinking, doing whatever negative. Because everybody may not understand that's heavy pain. But I've turned that pain into power. And I've turned that power into results. And every time I think about all the people that I lost, every time I think about the experiences, it gives me fuel to keep going. And as a leader, this is what you got to do. Think about all the elected officials that are sitting at home right now, getting paid off your money and are doing nothing. They're not out there on the front lines. They're not even out there, you know, doing free Zooms to talk with residents in their communities just to check in. Nothing. Nothing at all. And it frustrates me because and Jason knows this, like if I was in that position, if I was an assembly member, if I was a senator, if I was the mayor or whatever, yo, I'll be out there all day. <laughs> you know, I'll be sleeping in, 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 the, in the government vans or whatever, because I will want to make sure that I'm grinding out there, but while making sure that I take care of myself. But I will go hard because this is what you're supposed to do. Eric Adams said this, and he got it from a quote. For a paraphrase from somewhere, and I'm going to paraphrase it for you all. But he says, in moments of crisis, there are multiple opportunities. There are opportunities to relax. There are opportunities to, you know, be complacent. There are opportunities to just do nothing. And then there are opportunities to lead. These are opportunities right now where you, as ambassadors, as leaders, can step up and go in and be of service to your students. Sounds cool? Rule number seven, this is a big one. Sleep is the best medicine for the best outcome. Machines can run all day, you can't. You know what was the last time I restarted my phone? They I got a notification that said, your phone hasn't been restarted in seven days, you might wanna do that. My phone was running ongoing for seven days. Have you ever stayed up and grinded through seven days? I don't even, I can't even get past two. Because your body's going to tell you, oh, you ain't going to sleep? I'll shut you down. You got to take care of your body. As leaders, we, we tend to grind, 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 grind. And yet, we forget to take care of ourselves. And one of those moments of taking care of ourselves is the ability to um, make sure you get rest. The work will always be there. The question becomes, do you want to continue to be in the space where you can do the work? And the way you do that is by getting some good rest. And ain't no four hours here, two hours there. I'm talking about six to eight hours of good rest. Okay? You want to make sure that you have that. All right? Make sense? All right. Moving on, we're gonna get, get through this because I, I wanna you know, hit you with more stuff. Rule number eight, trust, encourage, and believe in your team. You can't do everything, so why make it harder for yourself, right? Why do we always, uh, there are leaders who always feel like they gotta do it themselves. Ugh, not the way I want it, I gotta do it myself. Ugh, you know? All right, I hate a micro, I despise a micromanager. You know what a micromanager does? This is you. This is the boss. You doing all right? You all right? You sure? 
Did you do that? Did you send that email yet? Like, get off of me, <laughs> okay? Those are micromanagers. They always got to constantly see that you're doing something instead of trusting and believing your team, right? You hired the experts. You, you are elected the experts in your field or you're trained to become the experts in your field. So why would I make it harder for myself? Right. You see it all the time at press conferences. When a question comes up, the mayor or the governor or whoever asks a question as a difficult question, what they say. Well, I'm going to yield the floor to the commissioner of the finance who can be able to answer that question. Or I'm going to yield the floor to the commissioner of the police department who can answer that question. Why? Because they're the experts. That's what they're getting paid to do. Trust your team as a leader. Trust them. All right. And even if things don't go right, it's beautiful thing is practice. If you see people having that potential, then encourage them. They will get better. They'll get better. Okay? Number nine, always remember your why. When you feel like quitting, remember why you started. All my people, who those who started exercise journey, like I'm, I'm in a, currently in a four-month physical fitness journey, and I'm three weeks in. And there are moments where I'm like, all right, I think I gave it a try. I'm good. I'm tired. That's it. <laughs> I'm all right. But then I remember why I started and the why keeps me going. Because I'm not trying to go back to where I started. I ain't trying to start from week zero and start all over. You gotta keep going. Even when you're tired, even when it feels like it's too much, you have to keep going. You have to keep pushing. You have to understand why you're doing this. This is for you. This is for whatever reasons that you're doing this for. I'm choosing to lead because of this. I'm choosing to be of service because of this. Remember why you chose to do this. Remember why you took the time to talk to people and ask them and be in support of you becoming a leader. You did this for a reason. And if those reasons aren't in alignment with being in the service, then you need to even have the courage to even step down and give somebody else the opportunity to be of service. We, in this time, we do not have time for people who's going to be wasting leadership roles. When there are people out there who are urgent, urgently needing it. Make sense? Number 10, write the vision and make it plain. If you don't see it, how can you believe it? This is a picture that I took. Uh, this was a picture of me, my men, one of my mentees, my god brother, and my best friend. This is December of 2016 at the White House. And this picture. It's so important to me because they all know that's where I'm going to live one day. And I have been given the honor to go to that place while someone who looks like me at that time was still presiding over it. And I remember inviting them to come. And, you know, I wanted to make sure we got there on time, everything. and my best friends and all of them, they, they're hilarious. They having the time of their life. They out there talking, cracking jokes, flirting. You know, I'm like, they, they just beast mode. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm looking in every room and I'm absorbing everything. I'm absorbing the entire moments of each space. And I remember my best friend was like, yo, why are you treating this joint so seriously, bro? I was like, yo, bro, you don't understand. I'm going to live here one day. Do you understand that? Like, I'm going to live here. You're going to come and visit me here. So I need to see myself in every space to make sure that it's in alignment with what I want and the calling that I have on my life, right? You have to write your vision down. And this is one of the mantras that I said to many people. And this is something that I created as well. It's four steps. Ready? Number one, see it. Number two, speak it. Number three, believe it. Number four, do it. That simple. See it, speak it, believe it, do it. If you could see it, then you can speak it. And if you can speak it, you will definitely believe it. And if you believe it, you will do it. Number 11. Sit down, be humble. 
You're not better than no one and no one is better than you. So what does that mean? We're all in the same space together, all right? As much as I am proud of my accomplishments, I know that there are people out there who is doing that and then some. The difference is, is that I'm proud that I'm doing it my own way. I'm not following nobody else's footsteps. I'm not following nobody else's trajectory. I'm learning from my own experiences and I'm learning to constantly remind myself and stay grounded in this journey. I'll tell you a real story. Uh, before Rona came in and, you know, and caused chaos of every doggone body, you know, uh, I, was at a, I was at a party and, you know, I'm in a financial space now, you know, I, I did it big, you know, me and my crew, we went VIP, we had bottles, we having a good time and I'm having the time of my life. I'm just enjoying myself. And I remember one of the people who know me came to me and was like, yo, bro, you don't understand how happy this is to, to see you here because there are people in our community who think that, you know, we're just less than that. We're crazy. We're wild and we're wild. We don't have nothing to do, but you're proving that even in all of your leadership, you get to still have fun. And that's what I tend to do. My friends are my, my close friends are my family. They will humble me very quickly. And when I'm around them, I get to be me. And that's so beautiful that I could be like this to y'all, right? And be like, yeah, yeah. But when I'm with my friends, I could be like, man, please, he ain't, he ain't say nothing but a word. His breath thing. You know, I could, I could talk jokes. I could crack jokes. I could do all those things. And it's so important to do that, to be grounded and have that balance, right? Everybody's story is unique. But it's what you do to make it better. You choose to make it better. Okay? Number 12. If you see something, do something. Get off your high horse and get in the dirt. There are leaders who tend, once they get in those positions, oh, I'm not picking up that spoon off the floor. The servants are for. If you don't get your, you know, that's when, I, you know, I, I channel my dad, you know, my dad, you know, back in the day, you know, I used to, I used to be bad, I used to get beat. But, you know, like, <laughs> if you see something, do something. Instead of complaining about it, get to it. Be that spark to ignite change, which is something that I go by as well. I am a spark. You know what a spark can do? Spark cause global changes. A spark creates massive wildfires. It's a force, it's a movement. So imagine what you can do as that spark. Be the change. Do not think that because you hold these positions and titles that you can't do certain stuff. I remember when I served as a, a, a president for a major organization. I had, you know, you had to wear a certain material, certain stuff. You had to, you know, wear a, a show and all that to show that you were the president. What I was doing was passing my stole on to younger children. I wanted them to wear it because I want them to know that they can do it too. And that gives them so much joy because it's, it's not only is it humbling, but it's letting you know that, hey, I'm invested in you. Or there was times where I was supposed to speak. I'm just supposed to speak, but situations went wrong. Hey, in my suit and tie, matter of fact, I ain't even, I ain't even one of those mopping in a suit and tie. I took my shirt, you know, my suit off, took my jacket off, and I got to work. I started mopping, helping, cleaning up, doing whatever I had to do, because at the end of the day, if I can help to make it better, then I'm going to do that. And that takes a different type of leader to do that. We got three more rules and then I'll take questions. Number 13, this is a big one. Woo, this is a big one. Master the power of listening. Everyone may not love to be seen, but everyone loves to be heard. Right? Just look at what's going on right now. There are people who are not, who are not showing their faces on, on Zoom but they're listening to what I'm saying and I know that they'll have questions and I'll have to be able to respond to them, right? The people we serve, you're gonna encounter all different types of people. You're gonna encounter people that, you know, is gonna be definitely excited to work with you. You're gonna get those people that are overly excited, that are super eager, that, you know, they just gonna be talking stuff, stuff and you're gonna be, you're gonna be doing one of these faces like, 
yeah, uh, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, you're right, I get, okay, all right, <laughs> I, I, I tend, you get those percentages of people, but what I've learned is that even those cases of people, all they want to do is just be heard, just listen to them, that's all it takes, listen to them, it's just a few minutes, you'll be fine, because I guarantee you, the people that you are actively listen to, listening to, when it times for the battle cry, they will be the first ones on the front line. And I'm a witness to that. So master the power of listening. Understand what they're saying. Don't just hear them. Take the time to process what people are saying. Because they could have ideas that could make your leadership better as well as your organization's leadership better. Makes sense. Number 14. Now, here's the big one. Now, I put this the second to last because I believe this overcomes everything else. Experience the power of vulnerability. Know thyself and story. Control the narrative and unleash your true power. That's supposed to say true power. Unleash your true power. What good am I to you if I don't share my story? What good am I that I'm teaching all this if I don't share the experiences that I've gone through to get to this point? I want you to know and understand something. This picture right here was one of the very first commencement speeches I've done. And I did it at the school I graduated from South Shore High School, which is now four schools because of the DOE. And I remember telling them my story of what this building was for me from 1999 to 2003. South Shore High School was one of the most violent schools in the city. And for me, the only way I survived was because I was a student leader, I was funny, and that helped me to become popular, if you will. If it wasn't for those things, I would not have survived South Shore in the way I did because it was an extremely violent and dangerous school. And to go and survive that dangerous school, to now come back to that school and speak before the graduating class, is a real testament of understanding and appreciating your entire story. And that when you become vulnerable, when you look at vulnerability, it goes simply like this. Ingredients by itself is absolutely disgusting. When you make a cake, if you ever ate an egg by itself, just crack it, it's disgusting. I have never did it, nor would I want to. Flour. If you take a scoop of flour, eat it by itself, ugh, disgusting. Right? If you take sugar, you know, even in the struggle, I remember as a kid, you know, you had sugar water growing up. See? Real stories right there. Sugar water. Before the first of the month, it would be like that. <laughs> right? But after a while, you're like, whoo, this is disgusting. But when you make a cake, it has all those ingredients. And that's what vulnerability is. Taking all of the things that you've gone through and have experienced and has become the great cake, the great person that you are. You could not be the person you are today if it wasn't for all of those moments that you've gone through. And as leaders, we have to constantly boost morale by being vulnerable. And then the last rule is celebrate and have fun being an authentic leader. No one will celebrate you better than you. This picture was taken January 1st, 2020. Me and my crew, we went out to We Year in Queens. Nice little masquerade party. This is the picture before we got crazy, all right? But, and people are probably looking at us like, man, look at us. We probably look wow. We probably look like we all been drinking and everything like that. And that's cool. You're right. You're absolutely right. But what y'all don't know, or what people don't see, is the amount of power that's in that picture. 
These are my close friends from Brooklyn College, right? And in this picture, there are teachers, there are IT uh, supervisors, there are actors, there are organists, musicians, there are costume designers, and future elected officials. So if we can take the time out of all of our schedules and come together and put our titles aside and put our leadership aside and have fun, why can't you? We get so caught up in doing the work, doing the work that we get disappointed in like, Oh, great. Yeah, I accomplished that. What do you mean you accomplished that? That is a major accomplishment. Celebrate yourself. When was the last time you danced like no one's watching? I used to laugh at the people because, you know, you got some people in a party. They just dance all wild and crazy. But then I understand now because this is their moment to shine. This is their moment of freedom. This is their moment of celebration. And I love celebrating. I will be the first one on the dance floor. And the last one off. And if you don't believe that leaders can do this, look at some resources. Google Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm, at her time as an assemblywoman and as a congresswoman, first person on the dance floor. Look, read her bio. Thurgood Marshall, in the midst of taking on the country, he and his team for downtime went to karaoke and drank. Could you imagine playing, doing karaoke with the great Thurgood Marshall? This is the man that's taken on segregation at its core, about to be the next Supreme Court justice, and he still has time to celebrate and have fun. President Obama does it all the time. George Bush did it. There are so many people that are leaders that know how to just have fun. Why can't you? So go and have fun being a leader because leadership is joyful. And when you have joy and exude joy, others will feel that and that's how you begin the change that you're looking for. So now it's time to be a successful, it's time to be successful in break taking. It's one of my favorite quotes from my president, the Honorable Barack H. Obama. He says, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for, and we are the change that we seek. I abide by this all the time. I ain't got time to wait for people. When I ran for city council. I did that. That was phenomenal. I have one life to live. If I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go to the next level. I ain't got time to be working steps up. We get so caught up in working the steps that if you understand the essence of daring to be different, you don't even, if you follow your own path, you can skip all of those steps to getting to where you want to go. But it's all about you and your power of choosing. So at this time, I hope this was helpful. And, um, you know, I want to take questions uh, and uh, really, really thank you, you know, to, to for all of you who listen and chose to, to, to understand what's going on. And yes, I would like to take some questions. Can I just say something like before, like people just like get into questions? It's like it was one of the things that you said. It was number nine. It was number nine, and it it reminded me something that um that was spoken in my class. Like I'm currently, I'm a former hostel student. I currently do go to Brooklyn College as well as a theater student, and it was one of the things that was said in my production class when we were studying um the design process. The first thing on the it was like a seven step design process. And the first thing that 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 my professors were emphasizing and I even noticed that they mentioned in my other classes was commitment. Commitment's always first. And in the design process, you always go back to the other factors. You always go back to research. You always go back to your layouts. You always go back to commitment. You go down the design process and you always go back. You always go back. If you're starting to feel like you're losing focus, you always go back to commitment, remembering why you're doing it. And I just really wanted to mention that because I remember like my professor saying that and I'm just thinking like that's really true like it it is how it is sometimes like you know you can 
you can like lose your way but you just gotta remember why you committed like that's like something that's like like you decided to commit and if you lose your way you can always go back to your commitment and that's right. like one of the things I really wanted to just like mention that I learned from class that you mentioned which I think is a hundred percent true and I will even go further and add to that and I will ask you guys to write this down just something new I discovered from myself that I'm teaching and telling everyone the six C's and the six C's is this commitment creates consistency consistency creates change commitment creates consistency and consistency creates change and that's exactly what you said so thank you <laughs> any other questions okay so I want to say that in this time that you all are absolutely amazing and I challenge you I challenge you for this month of May let this be the month for your motivation let the I challenge you these next 30 30 days cuz today's the first the next 30 days take what I shared with you mold it into your own and give yourself the opportunity to transform into becoming a phenomenal breathtaking leader. May hey. I ask a question? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, please forgive my tardiness on the call. Um, my name is Michelle Quintero, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I'm an alumni of Hostos Community College, and I'm also a professional actress as well. Um, my question for Mr. Henderson is, a lot of us are at home right now and shut in and quarantined and a lot of other things. How do you be consistent? Because uh, I'm, I'm grateful everything happens for a reason. I was late, but I got that. Commitment creates consistency. Consistency creates change. What if you want to be committed and you have all of it inside of you to be committed, but because you're shut in and you're at home, how do you motivate yourself? Like, mm. how do you how do you keep the consistency? Because it's easy when you're in college. It's easy when you have a group of people around you going, hey, you got to do this. Hey, you got this paper to write. Hey, you got to memorize these lines. Hey, did you study that play? It's so easy to do it when you have a, a, a group. But when it's you alone, with me, I use my faith. And trust me, whew, that takes work too. But how do you, how do you keep the consistency with just you alone? If that makes sense. It does make sense. And the Can I respond to her? Okay, sure. Let's go. I like this. Go ahead. Um, hey, Michelle. Um, I'm actually currently a hostel student right now. Um, and in reference to what you're saying about how you can make yourself, um, push yourself and like do for yourself and like the consistency with yourself. I found myself in the same position as you not too long ago. And, you know, I kind of, I did hit rock bottom and I kind of got myself out of that place. And the way that I did was, I was just like, you know, what can I do for myself now during this time for my mental sanity and for my peace of mind also for just to keep my emotions in check so that I don't become too emotional and irrational and focus on the depression portion and just focus on moving forward and what I can get done now and learning how to control things that are within my control most importantly. Um, so I would recommend, think of the things in your life that you have control over and control that because you know you can. Now the things that you can't control, you try to find a way to work with it or around it. I um, have been having a lot of difficulty with um, leading my fight for the undocumented community. And it's not an easy one because it is the community that's the most um, ignored. 
Um, no one wants to talk about them. No one wants to deal with them. No one wants to even bring it into the atmosphere. And um, my fight has been creating opportunities for them to obtain higher education. I don't think that a citizenship status should determine whether or not you are capable or allowed to receive a higher education. We all want to be educated, which is why we are all in school, regardless of the fact. Yes, some of us may be citizens and some of us may not be citizens, but it doesn't change the overall common goal. Everyone wants to be educated. We all want to better our lives and we all want to better ourselves, which is why we're in school. Um, so what I did was I started to just sign up for workshops um, structured around immigration policy, educating myself more about immigration policy, um, educating myself more about the census and how it affects immigrants or doesn't affect immigrants and how they can, um, and basically helping them fill out the census um, forms as well. I actually came in late to this Zoom chat meeting because I was in another Zoom meeting that was speaking about immigration advice and um, helpful like websites and information and things like that. And we also like had a guest speaker from the mayor's office that specifically deals with immigrant affairs, attend that meeting as well. And um, during that meeting, I received so much information, but I was like, you know what? If no one wants to help me, what can I do to educate myself to receive the correct information, to make sure that I'm relaying the proper information on all of my social media platforms, as well as the students who call me or email me on the daily basis asking me for X, Y, and Z, and then me trying to just make sure that the information that I have is fully accurate and useful to them, most importantly, because you do not want to relay information that does nothing for a person. So just being educated about that as well and realizing that. And it has been difficult, like you said, it's not easy when it's just you and it's your fight. And you know, it's easier when you have a team of people that are just as motivated as you are to get the overall job done or the overall goal done. But don't let that discourage you because you don't have a team. I don't have a team right now. And you know, the team that I did have, they're going through their own thing right now personally, and I understand, but I have not decided to wallow, uh, to wallow in self-pity, but to be actionable during this time and be as proactive as possible. And sort of just- And let me, and let me I don't mean to cut you off, I'm listening to you. But um, the reason why I asked that question was because, yes, I agree with you 100%. Um, everything that you're saying is on the same page of what I, what I kind of had in mind earlier. And I think that what comes with it is being accountable. If you hold yourself accountable for what you to me at home, was out a little bit in audio there. can you just repeat what you said? I'm sorry, you just went out a little bit in audio. Can everyone hear me? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Just, just yeah. a little. It's like a little um, choppy. I think your, your Wi-Fi is cutting off a little bit. That's why. I think her camera just froze on me, at least on my end. Is so she I, uh, I just. Yeah, I can't see her. I think, I think she, she exited the, the the Zoom chat to come back. Michelle, oh, you're you're Michelle. muted. You're muted right now, Michelle. Unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. Unmute yourself. <laughs> okay. All right. She so, she has jumped into a different part of the the video. That's why. Sorry about that. The video like went crazy on me over here. My service. I'm changing it. But anyway, what right. I was saying was uh, help me was making a schedule for myself mm -hmm. and I set different alarms in my phone and each alarm has a so the first one is my time with God that has to be done before I do anything else the second one is create your craft work on your craft so I discipline myself to sit on my computer for two hours and do whatever I need to do whether that's work on my resume send out headshots um network with another actor that i know share something that i wrote write something different so holding myself accountable has been what's helped me so that was the kind of the preface for my question because that was the discovery i had with this is that it's easy for us to get caught up in the negative because that's all we're fed is the negative it's different and that's what shows leadership to actually step up and take ownership 
of what is yours and what you need to do because this will end in Jesus name. This will end. So when that's done, what am I going to show? What am I going to carry with me and show for my legacy when I step outside my front door? And I, so, may, I may not be a college student, but I still have an audience in that there are people looking at me in the sense, not so much about what they think, but so much about what is my legacy? How am I going to encourage someone else after this? Because that's a big responsibility. I'm sorry. I talk too much. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I want to answer that, and this is for everyone. Uh, I said in the beginning of this workshop, and I'll say it again, this is a time for transformation of self. Don't worry about what's happening outside your doors. It's about you now. And you get to transform. And the way you do that is by taking it one day at a time. I have to remind myself of that because a great redwood tree doesn't grow overnight. Skyscrapers aren't built overnight. A plant, a seed doesn't become a flower overnight. It takes time. And I hear and understand the eagerness because I've experienced that. I talk to, you know, my therapist and I tell him, you know, the eagerness. But it's about the daily progress that you're making and that you're doing it for you. This is not about anybody else but you, because when you do it for you, the people will see it and they will benefit from it. Don't worry about what people results is gonna look like. This is your time and you gotta use this time to transform it. Change the environment of what you're looking for. Even if you have to move some things around, release some things. There's probably some love letters and some old stuff that y'all have in y'all closets that is just sitting there chilling just partying, having a good time, old negativity in your closet. Throw it out. There are clothes and things that you all are holding on to that could be given to someone in need right now. Release that from your space and help somebody else. This is the time for transformation and it takes one day at a time. So I uh, hope that helped. Uh, any other questions? Good one. Going twice. All right. So I just want to say once again from the very bottom of my heart. Oh, wait, got one? Okay, yes. And Rex. I think that's just a clapping hand symbol. Oh, clapping hand symbol. Okay. Well, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I, I thank you all for being on. I, I love this is my signature workshop. Like everybody asks for this workshop. And if we was in person. I would have turned it up for you all a little bit differently because I would have loved to see y'all faces when y'all, especially when I started the song, because some of y'all look, you know, very bougie, act like y'all ain't know how to dance. But, you know, we're going, uh, uh, Jason, I want to definitely do this again with you guys uh, when, when this is all said and done. Thank you, Jason, for giving me this opportunity. Jason is one of my good friends. He knows that when he asked me if I could do it, I got him and he got me and I'm here. And I gave you a good two hour, two and a half hour, uh, hour and a half, I should say of information that I pay, like I charge organizations money because they don't see what I'm telling you. And the difference is they have the answers all along, which begins with you. They're looking at all this stuff. So they paying me a whole bunch of money, which is good. Cause you know, brother gotta eat. <laughs> but the answer is very simple. Just be you. So when you be you, all of these things will come easy. So. I challenge you the next 30 days, come June 1st, check in with Jason, report to him. What have you done for yourself to make the necessary steps become a transformational, phenomenal, and breathtaking leader? I look forward to hearing your results. Jason, I, I yield the floor to you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jamal. Um, I just want to say, uh, last year, uh, I don't know if you know this, Jamal, the, the group actually decides um, who the speakers are going to be. And oh. then we talked about uh, student leaders who we wanted to have, the alumni participated. And so you were on that, that very first list. I really wanted you to come in last year and speak. I know you were busy. So I'm really Thank glad you. that you got to speak here uh, today. Uh, I would have loved to have you in our space. Um, to, to do your workshop and, and hopefully, you know, one day down the road, we'll be able to do that. Absolutely.
But if you guys could just give Jamel a round of applause. Thank you. Woo! Thank you all. <laughs> and, um, Thank you all. There we go with all the sounds. Um, so the other thing is that um, since the group is here and I wanted to just um, highlight a couple of things that are coming up, right? So we have our last workshop of the semester next week with two of our alumni. Uh, we have our um, online remote retreat, which is gonna be on May 16th. <clears throat> and we have a lot of the speakers and presenters for that. We're trying to do some, some interesting stuff for that. And um, we're going to do our ceremony online, passing the torch. I see Maria and Roviani are here. Um, and they're working on, on getting that together, which should be an interesting thing. Um, but I also want to bring up the fact that, uh, and I asked the chairs of the committees to be here so that we know this, is that the, the, the future is sort of uncertain for us at this point. So next week may be the last workshop for the foreseeable future. Um, and that would include not only just <clears throat> in-person workshops, but also workshops that we do um, and remotely um, because the budgets are going to be spent in different ways. So we have a budget that has been promised to leadership over the years through somebody named Ernesto Malave. Some of you know who that is, <clears throat> he's passed on. Uh, he made a commitment to us to make sure that we were going to do leadership program at hostels because he understood the value of it from his education. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we're going to have a new president. Um, circumstances have changed in CUNY. Uh, so most of that money goes to these workshops and goes to uh, the trainings that we do and the activities that we do, so some of the conferences that we might have. So uh, after next week, there's no telling when we might be able to meet again. Um, that's for alumni and current members. Uh, we'll, we'll try. Um, the alumni has a board that they're working on uh, to try to organize things, but that, that's the one thing. The other thing is that uh, even though uh, during the elections last week, the referendum passed uh, to get us some additional money because that comes out of your student activity fee and the university wants to make sure that they're um, supporting you guys as much as possible, which I agree with. Uh, they're probably going to cut some of the student activity fee. So the additional funds that we had for other things like the events that we do, passing the torch and things like that, is not going to be there either. Um, so I just wanted to be clear on that. Uh, I'll still be around in some capacity, at least for a while. Um, and I'll continue to be supportive of all of you um, <clears throat> throughout the course of your lives, because that's the commitment I have to you. Uh, just to give you a sense of uh, what I've been working on this week, uh, our school is really not thinking about our alumni and the commitments that they're making, police officers, nurses, uh, train operators, airline flight attendants, other things. And I recommend it to our um, publicity department, uh, communication department, that they do a story on our first responders, and I gave them a list of 20 names, 25 names of our students who I contacted, who are graduates of our program who are working in those areas. And those people all agreed, um, whatever their positions were, health department, um, we have an anesthesiologist, we have several nurses, doctors, um, uh, other workers have agreed to uh, do that. And so we're, they're gonna interview them to celebrate them. And that's my job really, <coughs> whether, we're doing this or we're doing other things is to continue to celebrate you and your accomplishments and try to get you focused on as much as possible um, so that you can make an uh, impact on society and society can understand the impact that you're making. Um, and that's in all of the areas that you choose to go into. I've never sort of like slided away from anybody um, who was part of our program who decided to go left. Uh, we have a comedian in our midst, you know, we have, uh, a politician, and we have everything in between. Uh, so whatever your journey is gonna be, I'll continue to celebrate it and push for people to recognize the accomplishment they have. But I wanted to be straight with you guys. Uh, right now, we don't know uh, where we'll be uh, in the near future, right? So this, the, at the end of this month, 
when we are finished with what we've had scheduled, um, we don't have any plans, which includes the volunteering, which is about 50% of everything that we do, um, as well as because of the slashing of the funds, probably workshops and other things are not going to be available. Um, you know, we're lucky to have Jamel here today. I don't know if Jamel is still online, but Jamel um, did this, uh, you know, um, pro bono. <laughs> he did it for free. Um, and a lot of people are willing to do that um, over time because they care about what they see here. They understand that there's value here. And especially people who've known me for long periods of time are willing to do that. Um, but a lot of people obviously have to make money too. <laughs> and so when you want to bring in professionals, and I like to bring in professionals, um, and Jamel is a professional, don't get me wrong. Um, I want I want to bring people in who can actually make an impact on your life. I don't want to have uh, Friday workshop series um, where we just have uh, people from the campus. That's very nice, but you can get that in a lot of other ways. And that's not what I was brought in the 13 years I've been around. That's never been what I've tried to do. Like once in a while, we bring somebody in from the campus. But for the most part, we try to reach out and we get people uh, who make a valuable impact on your lives. And I hope that at least once or twice over the course of the time that you've known me, you've had this experience with this program, uh, you've seen that you're getting something that's very special and very unique. Um, and so that's where it is. I mean, uh, these are challenging times uh, and I don't, a program is not the most important thing. What's most important is your lives. And then of course your well being as you move along. And uh, that's a lot of the conversations that I've been a part of about how to make sure that um, you all are moving forward towards your goals and, and, and staying safe and staying alive and being able to manage through these difficult times. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not immune to the idea that today is rent day and people have got to make those payments or have got to make some sacrifices. These are all things that are being discussed much higher than I am. So I just wanted to, to let you all know that um, because, you know, I, after, you know, the 21st and, and passing the torch, things will probably be fairly different. Um, I'll, you know, like I said, I'll still be around. I'll still be able to support you. Uh, but I don't have a, a means to, to make certain things happen. And then eventually when we get back to campus, which may be before May 21st, or maybe right after it, um, you know, I guess some decisions will be made about what it is that I'm going to be expected to do. And that may not include um, some of the things that we've done before, um, like leadership development workshops or volunteering. So there may be other responsibilities that I'm given on the campus because that's how it works. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. But it's Friday. <laughs> I'm glad to see that lots of you made it here to hear Jamel. Um, it is really important for me to have Jamel. Um, because, uh, I actually got to see him. I met him when he was at BMCC um, and have seen him grow and develop. And what's amazing about his story and what you should take most from his story, uh, other than the rules, which are really important, is that he did it from the same place that you guys are. So it doesn't matter. Uh, what your circumstances are. It doesn't matter if you're living, uh, you know, he told you where he's living. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, who passed away in your life or, or is not around anymore. It doesn't matter what obstacles have been set up before you. Um, you have the ability to accomplish all of your goals and your dreams and to challenge all the stereotypes that are out there and exist. And I love every time he, he does, we've been together a lot. Every time he does one of those um, things where he says, yeah, I don't care what anybody's thinking about me. I don't, I'm not worried about what anybody's saying about me. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. Um, and that's really important, right? Got to keep on your journeys. Uh, you all have dreams and desires that are focused on both you and your communities and your families and, and the people that have supported you mm -hmm. along the way. Um, and you're making roads for the next generation, right? So I've said this before, not in this forum, but you know, you guys are responsible to take care of my kids eventually, right? My kids are going to grow up in a world that you guys are going to be in charge of, um, and hopefully, you guys are going to make decisions that are better than some of the people who are making decisions today out there. Um, 
so that's you you know that's your responsibility i understand that it's, you know somebody who has young kids who are going to grow up in the world where they're going to need leaders and support so uh that's what i have to say um i'm glad you could be here we have one more workshop like i said next week that's um Yuneris and, and uh, tyree are going to do it uh they're both alumni of the program and i think you guys all know Yuneris. Uh, Tyree is a, a famous radio personality. Um, well, she's a radio personality. Um, so it should be fun to do the workshop with them next week. Uh, hopefully we'll see all of you then and anybody else who might want to join, you can please let them know uh, that it might be the last one for a while. So um, that's, where we, that's where we are. Do I have anything in the chat that I have? Can you guys hear me? Can everybody hear me? No, 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 not at all. You didn't hear me at all. You were just so far. We wrote it in the chat, but I guess you weren't looking at it, so we just let you continue to talk. So I wow. To wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I, 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 I heard you, Jason. I heard you, Jason. <laughs> I can't so. believe it, though. So. I hear you. Yeah, the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it. It is what it is. You guys can yeah. text me. And wow. <laughs> are there any questions, announcements, anything that needs to be said? Can okay. you just the send an email with what you said? What I said was this may be the last job <laughs> for a long time. Right. Go to the budget. We actually, you know, some. Next week is gonna be the last meeting and due to the budget, this might be the last time. Right. right. Essentially, that's why. But we hope that um, I pass on the torch and we hope that you'll give an hour or two on the Saturday when we do the retreat, we'll try to have some fun. I've got at least one person gonna try to climb some rocks. I got one person who's gonna do a little dance thing. We're gonna do a meditation thing in there. Uh, do some games it's not going to be it's going to be not going to be traditional workshops not going to be like talk and talk not going to be like this is how you become a great leader it's going to be more like you know so, some of the stuff we've actually done out on retreat so that you guys get a sense of it because we had to postpone our retreat um, or cancel our retreat however you want to look at it um, for the time being so um but we're going to try and do i want to have some fun stuff i'm working on something really special for the end uh, okay i can't i can't promise that I'll, I'll get the thing at the end but i'm gonna i'm gonna work on it as as easy, as much as i possibly can okay so, thank you jason you're welcome yes thank you jason for everything you have done for the students in the academy i really appreciate it and during this difficult time i am really appreciate that you still made the workshop happen for all of us and even though this might be the last workshop doesn't mean that the leadership is over we're still going to keep on going we're still going to keep on you know living to the best and then proceeding our future careers because we all got this and we're all in this together we're going to get through this crisis together <laughs> And yes. remember the power of your words. Does anybody hear me? The power of your words. What we speak out becomes our truth. And if this is something that is important. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you yeah. hear me now? Okay. You gotta make it quick and okay. short. So saying the, the yeah. power of our words is important. We can't hear a thing. Michelle. Speak out not, what you don't want your truth to be. That's all I'm saying. Don't speak out anything that goes against what you believe. Oh, okay. Right. Got it. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Gonna be warm out this weekend. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Okay. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy. Take one step at a time. Breathe. Yes. Bye, everyone. Healthy, everyone.
Always remember to Pusa. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy, Happy Friday. Friday. Hey, Jason. Yeah. Is it, is it too late to watch the other workshops online that you recorded from Zoom? They're all, they're all posted. Everything's posted. So yeah. it's not too late, right? Because I missed some of them. I want to, like, no, watch them and watch comment it. on it. Okay, great. Hey, Maria. Hi. Good seeing you. Hi. Wait, who's that? I'm Estelle, sorry. Lee Man, Come on. Hi, Estelle. Hey. Hey, boss. <laughs> boss, are we going to have a passing the torch meeting or no? When is that? Marie and Estelle, you're yeah, too cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you, Tiana. We're trying. Of course. Hi, no problem. Y'all don't got to try. Y'all are gorgeous, naturally. Quarantine is working. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, bro. Oh, that's good care. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm asking you, are we going to have one? Yes, Hi, I'm baby sorry. Jason. <laughs> Hi. He's gone. He's so cute. He's, He's grown so big. Is is he walking? Yeah, he walking. Oh, oh, oh. Baby Mario. Oh, oh my so God. Hey, Mario. <laughs> hey, Mario. Amazing. 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 so confused. He's like, this is too many things. Yes. <laughs> too many <laughs> It's like too many, too many faces I see. <laughs> also, everybody looking at him, he's probably like, whoa. <laughs> Yay. Oh, are we, 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 my we, are we, holding the meeting? Like are we, are we, are we, are we, are we, are we, um, Stefan was supposed to schedule a meeting. No, true. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, 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 I'm coming back to an extremely different place. There's a different president, uh, <laughs> different uh, administration, uh, but I could never imagine that there would potentially not be a leadership academy, that this is the place that I learned to be me. Um, the place where I met my sister, Thalia, the, the place where I, I, I made so much change and it wasn't about me. It was about changing the world and, and, and changing the way that people thought about leadership in terms of being a servant leader and 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 literally enjoying the little things and and celebrating our accomplishments and our failures alike so um i am i'm kind of emotional i'm trying not to cry because i've been tearing up over here because jason it's been it's, it's it's literally three years man uh it's been it's been three long years and you you've been through the the the, the war with me uh from issues on campus academically to personal issues, Jason literally, like, I went to Model UN. This man bought me a pair of shoes just so I can make it to there because I forgot my shoes at home. Uh, this is like, this is like my father, and, and, and I, yeah, and I and I and I love him so much. So to hear that it's disheartening, and to hear that there's no, there's no funding, and 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 this is important. Like I, I know that our education is important, but the soft skills that we're learning here and emotional intelligence and being prepared for our future and being motivated and, and goal driven and oriented. It, this is equally as important. Mm -hmm. And the function mm -hmm. of the Academy has always been to advance our students. Like we have people at Harvard, we have a diplomat in the United States. We have doctors, we have people who got married in the Academy. Shout out to uh, Michelle and Jamal, you know, like we have comedians, we have rustlers, uh, we have everything good. And that's in our community. One of the communities that was dictated to be, the poorest congressional district in the Bronx. And they came out of this academy. So it's really special to me. And um, I don't know, um, boss, I love you. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't leave Hostos truly because I, I believe in what we do here. I believe in every session. I believe in every person that comes and pours into us. And I believe in you um, and I love you from the bottom of my heart and thank you. Um, I can't believe that last week, next week, maybe the last session. So um, I truly love you, boss. I, I truly do. 
I wanted to say that. I'm sorry uh, for the long-winded speech, so please forgive me. I know that you guys are expecting a meeting out of me, but uh, I mean, I, I couldn't say anything without appreciating Jason for three years of my life, like literally being in my corner personally and professionally. Like, if, if I could point out one person in CUNY that cares for the students that they work with and will go mm -hmm. the extra distance, I, I mean, that's Jason. Uh, Jason is one of the most overlooked people and underappreciated people mm -hmm. in CUNY, but he's one of the hardest working people. So when you guys see him working in that office, this man's going off for you guys. He literally is going to town for you guys. Recommendation mm -hmm. letters, literally putting you guys in positions you never believed you could achieve or be in. And this has been the 13 year journey he's been on. So hearing that it might not be the same or it might change. I, I, I don't know that, that to me coming back to, like, I don't, I couldn't even fathom that. So I, on a Friday. I'm sorry. Oh man. Friday. You don't need to cry. Thank you so oh. much. We'll be okay. You just have to be realistic about the situation. You know, I mean, it's a dollars and cents. And the most important dollars and cents are the ones that you put into your own education. The reason we exist is because some of those dollars and cents come my way. But I've always felt that every dollar and cent that comes my way has got to go back to you guys. You know, special, like, I don't get it. This chair that you see behind me, <laughs> that when my old chair broke, and I ran it over from his office. And God only knows how long it was sitting over there. We don't go out and buy stuff. The couch fell apart on you and, and your friends in my office when you were hanging out. Those are the couches from 13 years ago. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I bought those mailboxes. The first thing I bought was mailboxes so that every single one of the members could feel like they had some ownership on the campus because that's what I felt when I got to Columbia, in my mailbox, right? And I don't, you know, we don't, we don't, you know, splurge on things that we don't need, right? So, and I'm not saying other people shouldn't splurge on things. Some, some things should be splurged on. But for us, every dollar goes into making you guys able to do the things that you want to do, which is you signed the contract, you signed something that you believe to be leaders. I'm going to give you the training that you want, that you need, or that I feel that you prefer, um, to get you there and provide you with opportunities. And all those opportunities that we've ever done have been brought to me by members. So, again, we, there's no model UN without Diana Sanchez. Right? That was the thing. There's no, you know, all the other stuff we do without all the people. It was heartening. It was disheartening today to hear about Isabella Geriatric Facility, which is a place that we went to for many years to hear that 80 people have died there. And that, we volunteered there. We, you know, we met with those clientele. God only knows how many people that we, we worked with, you know, passed away. That's the time we're in. It's a, it's a new world order. Mm -hmm. Move with it. Um, but there's no reason to cry, you know. It's, it's, nobody's, nobody, thank God, we were all healthy and we were able to be here. Um, for the most parts, our families are okay, and for those that aren't, you know, um, I, I share my condolences, um, and hopefully we continue to be okay and continue for people, you know, at our college and our university to be okay, and that the, the leaders make choices about how we move forward. Um, but, you know, it's like these are realistic things in terms of, of what we have to do. It's not like money, money just doesn't appear. Um, out of nowhere. And I'm not asking for anybody to go and do anything about it. I mean, the SGA uh, from the past year worked on us to get us some money to the referendum um, so that we actually would, we're going to have some summer funds for the first time ever and get some money for part time students for the first time ever. It was a little bit of money, but it, all that money, you know where that money goes, right? It goes to, you know, doing the activities, buying the t shirts, maybe getting you guys some lunch when you put in a full day's work or things like that. You know, nothing special, but the, the little couple of dollars makes a big difference when you think about, you know, the things that we do. So we, people push forward and, and continue to support our activities. These are bigger decisions that are going to have to be made in terms of you guys. They want everybody who works for the university wants to make sure that you get to your ultimate goal, which is to get to graduation from your associates and then your bachelor's and then wherever else you want to go. 
Um, and that's their job and that's their responsibility. So we're sort of a, we're a side program. We do something that's very unique and something special. And the people who take advantage of it have benefited greatly, I believe, um, and continue to give back, right? When I, when I contacted, I contacted 30 former students, only two didn't take the message and said, one, one called me, um, who's the godmother of my godchild and said, man, I can't do it. It's too much. Uh, and the other one said, they just can't talk about it now. And that was fair. She's a nurse. I mean, I, I've been seeing her posts all the time. But everybody else who, who I contacted said, yeah, I'm willing to talk. I'm willing to tell some of my story. And it was important to me. You know, we should celebrate our own. You guys should be celebrated. All the people who came before you should be mm -hmm. celebrated for the things that you've done, for the things that you do. And that's always been my case. It's always been what I've argued for. So, but don't be sad. It's Friday. We'll be here. <laughs> Party like a rock star. Party like a rock star. <laughs> um, sorry, guys, for getting emotional. I'm sorry. Just Jason. Knows no, it's how much okay. It's, it's, and it's, I, I wanna. And I, I wanna apologize, to you guys. Don't you apologize, guys Stefan. It's okay. It's okay to let out emotions. It's okay. It's okay. Um, don't apologize for being yourself. We yeah. I'm just, I, I, you. no, I just think it's I think it's funny. Um, you just remember be three yourself. years. You just remember all the faces, kind of everybody. Um, being yourself. I, I am being myself, and I'm proud of that. But it's just Jason oftentimes makes me think of the past and think of all the faces, all the stories. And, and Jason has spoon-fed me off of the alumni story and, and literally pushed me to being my best self. And... I know how much this place has helped me, and I know everybody who's still on this call understands that um, internally, externally, all around, you know. And it's not just that he fosters a respect between each other and this family between each other. It's, it's really the interactions with him, and it's literally getting to know somebody that has such a great history. Um, I, you know, I, you know, I... <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I walk into Jason's office for 45 minutes. We talked to the 45 minute therapy sessions and just sat there and just vibed with him and talked to him and hugged him and just literally like boss saved my life. So um, this Academy saved my life. You guys did. So uh, I, I said, when I first joined, I give my all to this place and, and, and I'm happy that I've been able to do that for three years. Uh, so I've dropped the ball sometimes, but I am, proud of the work that I've done and you guys should be proud of it too. I know mm -hmm. we're supposed to be having a meeting. So I, 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 you know, I have the chairs here. Uh, these beautiful, beautiful ladies are going to take over and speak. Um, and I'm going to task you guys with something before I shut up. And because we don't know the next passing the torch we're going to have, like this gotta be. So I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm trying to hold back right now, but this has got to be up there. This has got to, like, knock it out of the park. So this task for everybody who's here and everybody who's going to work on it, they got to understand this is a celebration of 13 years of empowering each other and, and, and just being the change makers. Okay. So, I mean, relax, relax. that's kind of it. That's, I, that's all I got. So, Maria, take it from me before I start talking even more. All right. Um, oh, let me funny. Close, let me close the session now, um, and we're just gonna have the chairs, right, for the next session. Sure. Okay. So I'll we'll set that. So everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, okay. Take care, everyone. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Me too. All right. Much love, you guys. Be safe. <laughs> Yes. I will love, I love, I love. Ritza, don't look so sad. The what? Don't look so sad. Oh. Right. Sorry. Stop okay. crying. I will. I'll stop crying, Sandra. Wait, I have a Marissa, question. Is it... Don't let Sandra, don't let Sandra bully you, okay? Sandra's been a bully in these comments. Like she's not Sandra emotional. Just because you. you're Haitian doesn't mean you're not emotional, okay? Wow. Wow. First of all, you always emotional. So listen. Boss is confused at this point. <laughs> years of my life, literally, like three years, bro. Like I'm gonna get emotional. 
Thank you. Thank you.